Hi, this is Coach Eichel. Today I'm bringing you podcast 9.2 over plant structure. So let's go ahead and delve in and let's talk about the basic differences between a plant cell and an animal cell just to cover what we covered the first semester so we make sure we didn't forget anything. So the basic structures of a plant cell that make it different from an animal cell are first of all its cell wall. Okay, animal cells don't have cell walls because we have skeletal systems and muscular systems to protect our cells. They also have a chloroplast. Animals, we don't have chloroplasts because we're not autotrophs, we're heterotrophs. We have to ingest our food somehow. Okay, so chloroplasts are going to be the autotrophic organelle inside of a plant cell. Then you also have a very, very large central vacuole, which is this white kidney shaped thing right here. That holds all the water, all the nutrients. This is very large in plants because this actually helps the structure of the plant cell. It gives it its shape, it provides it with what's called turgor pressure which helps it stand up out of the ground. And then it's also important to note that even though it doesn't make them different from us, but plant cells do have mitochondria because they have to go through respiration. Okay, they have mitochondria because they have to go through respiration. So they do have a chloroplast and mitochondria, but more prevalently they, they use the chloroplast. Okay, they have a chloroplast to separate differences between a plant cell and an animal cell. So there's four basic types of plant tissues. The first one is the dermal or which is the epidermis, which think of when you think of epidermis, think of our skin. It's pretty much the skin of the plant. It's the white waxy stuff you see on the top of the plant. This protects the plant and it covers all the cells nice and tightly compacts everything just to provide basic protection, just like our skin does. Then you have the ground, which is the bulk of the plant tissue. This is where all the photosynthetic mesophyll is contained. This is where all the nutrients and stuff are going to be stored at. Then you have the two types of vascular tissues, which are going to be xylem and phloem, which we're going to expand on all this coming up pretty quick. And then the last part is the meristematic tissue. The meristematic tissue is used for the mitosis part of a plant cell. It's for production of new cells. So think about growing tips and roots and stems inside the shoots. And I'm going to show you a picture of this to make it all make sense. So when we're talking about basic plant anatomy, okay, there's going to be two types of roots. Each there's going to be the root tip and then there's going to be what types of hairs are actually attached to those root tips. So the first type is a fibrous root. A fibrous root is a root that spreads out, has many, many flat roots that spread out over a very, very large surface area. You're going to most likely see this in monocots. Okay. You're going to see one big unit with a lot of little branches coming off of it. That is a fibrous root. If you didn't know what roots are used for, they're used to anchor the plant into the soil, absorb minerals and water, and actually also store their food. So we know this is a fibrous root. We know that number two down here is a tap root. When you think of a tap root, think of a carrot. Okay? So it's going to have one main central root with very, very small lateral or branches coming off of it. These are just here to absorb the the surface area to increase the absorptive surface area so that the plant itself absorbs more water. Then you have smaller root hairs which you see mainly in aquatic plants. This also increases the absorptive surface area because plants need lots of lots of water to survive. So we'll look at the root structure. The root cap. Root cap is going to be the protective covering of the root tip which is going to be this white part right there. Then your next part is going to be the meristem tissue. This is the region of the cell where the division or the actual mitosis occurs, which is going to be this secondary part, the part in blue. Okay, that's going to be your meristem. That's where all the mitosis occurs. Okay, it's the region of cellular division. So back to plant anatomy. We talked about the root system. Now let's talk about the shoot system, which is the part that you actually see most of the time. Okay. You have what's called nodes or inner nodes, which are going to be these small branches right here. Okay, then you have buds, which once something buds, that's going to be your bud. Okay, then you're going to have your flower buds and actual flowers itself. Okay, so let's expand on this a little bit more. And these are just the pictures of some modified shoots. A tuber is a potato, a bulb is an onion, a rhizosome is a ginger, and then strawberries are the traditional plants that you see they actually grow off of the off the vines kind of like tomatoes okay 
Nextly, we're going to talk about the leaves. The leaves are probably the most important, most important part of a plant. Without the leaves, the plant really can't survive. It can't really do what it needs to do. So let's talk about the function of leaves. We know that leaves function is to provide the plant with a system of photosynthesis. If we remember from first semester, photosynthesis, just a skeleton reaction, is a taken CO2, which humans give off. Okay, they also need water. They combine CO2 and water to make a sugar, which in this case is a carbohydrate, and then they give off oxygen. So that's just a skeleton equation, just to refresh your memory of what photosynthesis actually does. It's not balanced by any means, just wanted to give you a basic outline. CO2 plus water makes a carbohydrate, which in this case is glucose, and oxygen. So that's its ener energy production and sugar production. They also function in gas exchange, which we're going to talk about, and transpiration, which is a form of gas exchange, letting water in, letting water out. So leaves, there's two basic types of leaves. There's a simple leaf and a compound leaf, okay? Simple leaves are going to be these two over here. They're one flat undivided leaf, okay? Compound leaves are blades divided into leaflets. So you got one here, well this is divided into three leaflets, so that's a compound leaf. Then your petiole or your stalk is where the vascular tissue is actually contained at, which is going to be this part right here. It attaches to the stem contains the xylem and the phloem, which we're going to talk about what xylem and phloem are here in a few more slides. Okay, so when you're looking at epidermis, think about what the cuticle is. The cuticle is this square part right here. And think about a fingernail on a human. Both of them are used to prevent water loss, to prevent dehydration. Okay, the lower epidermis, which is going to be the bottom part of the leaf, is what contains the guard cells and stomata. What's important about the guard cells and stomata is they're used for gas exchange, okay? So they take CO2 in, they let oxygen out. They take CO2 in, they let oxygen out. They let CO2 in, they take oxygen out, okay? CO2 in, oxygen out. Guard cells and stomata. They control water loss by taking in CO2, letting out oxygen. So the mesophyll is where all the photosynthetic tissues are actually contained. It's where the chlorophyll's at, where the chloroplasts are located at. And then the last part are the veins. There's two types. There's xylem and phloem. And if you look in this diagram right here, it's the structure right here. So the xylem is what's used to transport the water. The phloem is what's used to transport the photosynthetic products, or the sugar in this case, because that's a product of photosynthesis, is glucose. So the veins of this are xylem moves the water, the phloem is going to move everything else, or the food. Here's just some pictures of some leaves, some pea leaves, some cacti, some succulent leaves, which you see a lot of those in the spring. And then poinsettias, which is the flower of Christmas because they're a real pretty red leaf. Here's another diagram of the stomata and guard cells. These white parts are going to be your guard cells. The stomata is going to be this part here in the center. Now these open and close based on CO2 and oxygen. So they take CO2 in, they let oxygen out, or they go through what's called transpiration. If you think about transpiration, if you put a plastic bag over a group of leaves, okay, the condensation that's going to form on the plastic bag is due to transpiration. It's the plant trying to get rid of water and, to, and bring in carbon dioxide. Okay. If you think about the mass of a tree, most of the mass of the tree comes from the carbon dioxide absorbed through the stomata and guard cells. So both of these systems work together. The shoot system and root system both depend upon each other. So since, since these roots is where all the photosynthesis takes place, the roots depend upon the leaves to transport down all the sugar. In turn, the leaves depend upon the roots to transport, to transport all the waters and minerals up to the shoot system. So they both depend upon each other, and without one, the plant doesn't do what it's supposed to do very well. So this has been Coach Heichel. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me or any of your teachers. Have a great day, and bye.